Hey guys, Joshua Bain Tech, and this is my review of my experience with Cricut Wireless. I know that many of you are actually waiting on my two cents about Cricut Wireless. I've kind of answered some of your questions through social media and a few tidbits here and there in some of the videos, but this is going to be my main video about my experience with Cricut Wireless. Ever since the OnePlus One like was announced, I started researching and digging what would be the best setup for my carrier if I were to switch. And at the time it's AIO Wireless and recently AIO Wireless merged with Cricut Wireless and now it's called Cricut Wireless. And actually AT&T is fixing to make Cricut Wireless their main prepaid service. So with all that said, I needed to find the best setup, the best network, um, best plans and all that kind of stuff. And Cricut Wireless actually has a pretty inexpensive plan set up. You can get $5 off of your plan if you do auto pay. So if you plan to use them, that's actually a really good way to save money. Now as far as our plan setup, I'm on the $40 plan which includes 500 megabytes of high speed internet. After that you get throttled and put down to slower speeds. Along with that package you get unlimited talk and text. So it's actually a pretty good deal and especially if I do end up signing up for auto pay, that's $35 a month and that's including tax and fees. So there's no hidden stuff, there's no taxes involved, that's just straight up what you pay. It's a really good price. Other options of course is T-Mobile, AT&T because those are definitely the actual main companies that this phone supports. The problem with T-Mobile, and I really wish this would work out and I'm not seeing that it's going to, is that coverage is very spotty in my area. Especially in my neighborhood particularly, like there's actually no coverage. If I were to show you map, there would be no color at all showing coverage so I have to get out to the main road to even start to get some coverage and I'm actually on the T-Mobile test drive right now trying to test that out with an iPhone 5S and once I got into the main town I got some LTE and some 4G coverage so that's the main area where I spend most of the time as far as when I'm outside of the house which is like church and other activities eating out shopping whatever the case might be. Now ever since I started planning on actually switching carriers I knew that I was going to have to be connected to Wi-Fi and the nice thing about T-Mobile is that you get Wi-Fi calling but only for Android devices so that's what sucks about the test drive is they send you an iPhone that doesn't have that so it almost defeats the purpose of half of my intentions of even doing the test drive. Anyway so back to Cricut Wireless my experience with it. At first it was pretty rocky um, I had a hard time getting the correct APN settings. I'm talking to customer service representatives that kind of speak broken English, so that was kind of rough. Um, I did some chat services to try to break that barrier of trying to understand somebody, and I still, like, it was just very rocky. Like, they didn't have clear instructions. Um, it was very difficult to get it set up at first. If you don't know what you're doing, this is the first time I've ever had to worry about settings as far as like APN settings and whatnot. With a Verizon phone you just put in the SIM card and activate it. That's all you got to do. Uh, but for this phone because it's unlocked it's just a new experience for me. So half the issue is me and half the issue is Cricut Wireless. The me part is that I guess I could have done more research but at the same time I'm not your typical customer. I'm actually technically inclined. I, I'm pretty good at this kind of stuff. So if they have a new customer going through this kind of ordeal, that new customer that might not have the same level of knowledge as I do is going to have a pretty rough time trying to get something like a OnePlus One set up on that network. Now I finally got the APN settings correct, but the part that needed to be said by Cricut Wireless was it needed to be factory reset. You do a factory reset, set up the welcome screen and all that kind of stuff, and then go directly into the APN settings and set it up and then it will work. And I'll have a link in the description of this APN settings. I made a post for myself and for anybody else that needs those. Another issue that I had was when I was on a chat, I was given the wrong APN settings. There was a part where the proxy, I did not have to have the HTTP into the part of the web address for that APN setting. And if I would have had that out, my MMS would have actually worked. That's when I got on the phone with Cricut Wireless because I was to the point where I was like going to try to my best to get the service canceled because I'm like, this isn't working. You told me that it would. The coverage isn't the best at my house. And then MMS isn't working. I couldn't do group messages. I couldn't send pictures. And those are, you know, daily things that happen for my phone functionality. So I needed that to work. And 
the customer representative who's very professional but ended up being to the point to where it's like you're gonna have to call corporate if you want to get an exception for getting a refund for the lack of service. That phone call actually took place on Friday evening and it was pretty much done for business hours. I'd have to wait till Monday in order to even get any corporate business done. So over the weekend, I fixed it. I did a factory wipe and put the APN settings, the correct ones in there and it's been gravy ever since really. Once I got past all the APN mess, I uh, was pretty much set. And I give my rating of customer service probably a seven. I'm actually, I'm gonna bump it down to five out of 10 stars because they need to be able to have all their ducks in a row. Like it took a lot of troubleshooting that seemed to be what would be like basic troubleshooting steps to tell a customer and that didn't happen. I had to figure out a lot on my own and I'm not the typical customer. Not every customer is gonna be able to do that or even want to go through those kind of steps. But I got the one plus one, so I wanted to get the thing working and get it working on the network. Not to mention I already spent money on getting a plan for 30 days. So I needed to get it working because I wasn't gonna wanna waste my money on that. As far as the service, the cell phone service itself, it's actually been pretty good. Like it's been flawless. Like I haven't had any problems whatsoever once I got past all the APN mess. It works, there's signal. I've never had an issue of it dropping out. Phone calls are clear. I've made plenty of phone calls, whether I was connected to Wi-Fi, when I was traveling in the car, when I was in town where there's the strongest signal. I always had signal and my phone calls came in clear. People could hear me, I could hear them fine. Text and MMS services work fine. They all go through. I'm able to carry on conversations that way. My biggest complaint is actually the data speed. And it's almost like a pointless thing to bring up because I know I'm gonna to have to be connected to Wi-Fi pretty much all the time as much as I can and use the off Wi-Fi service onto the data plan as limited as possible, which basically changes the way that I'm gonna use the phone. Now with my Verizon 4G LTE network with my Note 3, I would be able to do tons of tasks. For example, if I do decide to keep this after my 30 days is up, the thing I'll probably miss the most is there's times where I'll go to my mom's house and edit videos, take videos and whatnot, but she's got crappy Wi-Fi service, so I would just bust out my Note 3 and use the tethering and it worked fine. So like that aspect, I would definitely miss with my Note 3 on the Verizon network because of that functionality. With Cricket, there's just no way, especially on that 500 plan because like it doesn't take much to fly through that kind of stuff. So the reason why I kind of say like it's, it's hard to even bring it up because it's such a limited plan. I made the choice to be on that plan so I can't complain about it too much. I just have to change my habits with it. While we're still on the topic of data speeds, it just sucks. Like I did a speed test and it only gets up to eight Mbps and it's just not that great. It's like, ugh. Like when I'm used to Verizon where I'm getting like 20 plus download, it's like, that's just, it's easy to get spoiled on, that's for sure. But only up to eight, and that's like if you really hit it off good. Upload speed, I don't even want to mention it. So in conclusion, if you are looking to go to Cricut Wireless, this is the kind of person that you need to be. One, you wanna save money. It's a really cheap plan. $35 is not much. You do have options of getting like a plan that has 2.5 gigs worth of high speed internet, but it's not really high speed. Only eight download, that's just not fast. So it's not worth even having that kind of data plan for 2.5 gigs or more. So if you're gonna to go to Cricut Wireless, just go with that $35 plan and just be happy with it and change the way that you use it. Be connected to Wi-Fi as much as possible and you'll be fine because the phone quality was fine, the data is fine because you're on Wi-Fi and your text and your MMS will work just fine as well. So that's the kind of person that you gotta be to go to Cricket Wireless in my opinion. Uh, you're gonna be connected to Wi-Fi most of the time. If you're traveling a lot, I probably wouldn't do that because you're gonna fly through that data. You're gonna get even slower speeds after that point. So my overall rating of Cricut Wireless, if I was gonna put it on a one to 10 point scale, I would give it like seven if I'm in a good mood, six if I'm just like, that's just the way it is. The main two issues I have with the Cricut Wireless experience is that beginning 
rough, rocky start because I needed to get it set up and it took a while to get it set to where it needed to be and the customer service needs to have their ducks in a row. When it comes to some of the basic troubleshooting, ask me like, did you wipe the phone and then did you put the APN settings in? And then did you put the correct APN settings in? And then not to mention give me the correct APN settings. Don't tell me that I need to have the HTTPS in there and it doesn't need to be in there because that put the MMS out of function. So like that really knocked the rating down because of that first experience. The other part is that if you're gonna label it as high speed, it needs to be high speed. Eight download, that's pathetic. Um, it doesn't need to be that slow. The speeds need to match up with the network that it primarily works on, which is AT&T. And I know for a fact that AT&T customers get a lot higher speeds than that. So between those issues, that's where I get the six or seven out of it. Other than that, it's a very functional network. I'm getting what I need to get done and I'm still enjoying my OnePlus One even though I have to be connected to Wi-Fi most of the time, which is fine because like there's not many places that don't have an open Wi-Fi connection or one that you can access. I hope that this video helped you out and I hope it gave you some insight about my experience that could be like what your experience could be with Cricut Wireless. Thanks for watching. Please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so so you can see more videos like this. Yeah.